Hi, my name is Claire and I'm a former Roseway crew member. And today our goal is to figure out why boats float. So we're gonna do some experiments to figure out what buoyancy is, and then we're gonna build our own boats and see how much we can fit in them. So before we begin, you'll need just a few things from around the house. Uh, the first thing is some sort of container of water. Now I'm using a big clear plastic bin so that you all can see what's going on inside. Um, but you could use anything from a bucket, a bowl. Um, you could do this experiment in your sink or you could even do it in a bathtub um, if you want to. The second thing you're gonna need is a collection of objects from around the house. Um, the one thing to keep in mind is that these objects are gonna be getting wet. Uh, so make sure that you find things that you don't mind putting into water. Now the third and last thing that you'll need is some tin foil um, for when we are constructing our own boats. So once you have all of your materials, we are gonna get started with a little game that we like to call sink or float on Roseway. So the first thing you're gonna do is take your collection of objects from around the house. And one at a time, you're gonna pick up your objects. So I'm gonna start with this pencil. Um, and you're gonna evaluate your object and think about whether you think it's gonna sink or float in your container of water. So check out each object, make a guess, and then test it out to see what happens. So first, this pencil, I think it is going to float. Ah, there we go. So my pencil floated. What's next? This little bottle of Purell, really good to have nowadays. I think it is also going to float. It feels pretty light. It's kind of right in the middle, um, just floating, but sinking down into the water a little bit there. Now I have a Magic 8 excuse ball. I think this is going to sink. It's kind of heavy. Oh, it's also floating. All right. Three floating objects. Let's see. How about a lip balm? I think this one might sink too. That one floats too. All right. Lots of floating objects. I'm going to go with a penny. I think this penny is going to sink. There it goes. All right. And finally, I'll try out this cork, which I think is also going to float. And it does. All right. So, now we're going to think about why some of our objects are sinking and why they're floating. Now, I might think that, well, this penny is, is kind of heavy, um, so that must be why it sinks, right? It could be that it weighs more than my other objects compared to this cork, which is really light. But if we think about it, there are huge barges um, and shipping containers that are made out of really, really heavy materials like metal that sink but they still float. So there's something else going on there. Now it turns out that my objects are either sinking or floating because of their density. So density, D, is equal to an object's mass, M, over volume, V. But what does that mean? Mass is how much stuff is in an object or matter. So Inside of this cube, there's not a whole lot of stuff, so it has a small mass. But if more matter is inside of our cube, then it has a bigger mass. Volume is how much space an object takes up. So here's our cube again, and it isn't taking up a lot of space. It has a small volume. But this one has a big volume. It's taking up a lot more space. Now let's think about density again. Density equals mass over volume, which means the amount of stuff in a certain amount of space. So say we start with a small volume and a medium amount of mass. 
This cube has a high density with matter packed tightly together. Keeping the mass the same, if we increase our volume, density decreases and the matter is less tightly packed. Increasing our volume even more, our cube now has a really low density. Now, thinking about my objects, my penny was like that first dense cube sinking all the way to the bottom. My cork was like the biggest cube with really low density floating right on top of the water. And my magic eight ball was like that middle cube with a density somewhere in between. So my objects with low density floated and my objects with high density sank. But just how dense can an object be and still float? Well, the answer is in the water. Fresh water has a density of one gram of mass per one milliliter of volume. Objects less dense than that will float and objects more dense than that will sink. But all water isn't created equal. Have you ever heard that it's easier to float in salt water? Let's try to explain that using density. Well, what makes up water? In fresh water, we've got our H2O molecules. And they're in salt water too, but there's also salt. So more mass in the same amount of volume means that salt water has a higher density than fresh water. And therefore, you can float just a bit more easily. Now, before we build our boats, let's think about that big barge. This boat is made of metal, which we know is more dense than water. So in order to float, this boat is designed to have the right balance of mass and volume so that its overall density is less than the water. If we look inside, there's some stuff, but there's also a whole lot of space. So the boat's density is lower than the density of the water. Buoyancy is the tendency of an object to float in water. Now, this is closely related to Newton's third law of motion, that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So gravity exerts a downward force on the boat against the water. And buoyancy is the equal and opposite force the water exerts right back. A more dense liquid is going to exert more force. So fresh water isn't going to exert quite as much buoyant force as salt water, which in turn isn't going to exert as much buoyant force as, say, jello. Knowing what we know now about mass, volume, density, and buoyancy, we are going to try to build our own boats and see how much they can carry. So for me, I'm going to try to maximize the amount of volume inside of my boat. So now that I've got my boat built, I'm gonna go ahead and test how much stuff I can fit into this space while keeping my boat afloat. So let's see, I'm gonna imagine that my boat needs a pretty big crew. So each coin is gonna represent a crew member. One, two, three crew members. Maybe we need some more crew on this boat. Uh-oh, I'm seeing a little water in the bottom of the boat. Looks like our bilges are filling up. Let's add, hmm, let's add some more treasure. Let's see how much treasure we can add while my boat stays afloat. Uh-oh, oh, down it goes. Now we know that with the right balance of mass and volume, even really heavy ships made of very dense materials can still float even when they're carrying lots and lots of heavy cargo. So get creative with your boat designs and don't forget to share a picture or a video of your boat building experiments with us.